Hi guys, I am so excited for today because today for the very first time ever, we are going to be attempting to hatch out our very own new breeding flock of chickens. So my girls are like three years old right now and they are just not as productive as they once were. I have 10 laying hens and I'm averaging about three to four eggs a day. Uh, so the plan this year is to um, hatch out our new laying flock from our own little barnyard mix. I have red wine dots, a golden lace, um, barred rocks, and um, not buff orpingtons, golden comets. So I know I would really like to get my golden comets and my Rhode Island Red. They were by far my best egg layers. Um, so I have a very small Brinzia egg incubator. It holds seven eggs, which if I got seven new laying hens, that would be perfect for our family. Um, even if I just got five or so, four to five, I would be happy. Because um, there were times when they were at their peak of production that we were swimming in eggs, which isn't a problem because we have plenty of family to give them away to. Um, but what our family needs, uh, four to five laying hens would be more than enough. So over the last, you guys can see that, yep. Over the last three to four days, I've been collecting my best eggs. Um, and I am I know what they are. So this one, for example, is my Bard Rock. This is a Golden Comet. And this is my Rhode Island Reds. So I kind of put best to worst. Um, I want to show you some of the things that being a first time egg hatcher, I think why I'm not going to choose some eggs. I don't know if it's real. It's just a gut feeling. So this one, for example, can, I don't know if that's gonna pick up on the machine. The eggshell just looks like more porous to me, not as strong and thick. Um, my Rhode Island Reds are very nice. I have been storing them point down. I know that that's something that you have to do. Today though, I came out and I got um, this morning, my incubator all nice and warmed up. It's at the right humidity level. Um, I'm going to leave the link to the one that I purchased, but I'm also going to leave you guys a link to a farm girl in the making um, Facebook page. Maybe you can reach out to her. I know she has affiliate links sometimes for discounts. I don't know if it's something that she has all the time, but I used... Um, like a coupon code of hers um, to get like 20% off or something when I purchase this. So I'm just gonna walk around to the camera and show you um, how I'm loading the eggs. Okay, so this is a digital one and it's, it's telling you like how many days you have to count down and the instructions um, have all the settings typical for whatever type of flock you're hatching out. Um, I'm gonna open it. Well, in a little bit, I will. But it, the, some of the really cool things is, is this has an auto turning cycle. So you don't have to be here like for us that work um, throughout the day. I don't have to be here to turn it. Um, and it also has an exterior well for filling your water to keep the water temperature and humidity correct inside. So I watched a manufacturer's video the manufacturer Brisnea. And what I understand is it's okay if they're a little dirty, you just don't want them really dirty. And he said he marks the eggs with a pencil um, with an X at the 10 o'clock and an O at the two o'clock. And that way you can tell if they are turning um, evenly. So I'm gonna just mark them all. I don't wanna use that one. Another thing he said is you don't, you definitely don't want to shake them. We'll be somewhat gentle with them. Okay, I think I have seven ready. 
So inside is um, the well for the water. One side stays full. And this little doohickey is the automatic turning system. And we are going to load them. When you're using the tray, they said to load them point side out. Without the tray and you do manual turning would be, whoops, point side in. That's the one I'm not using. And start with one of your markings up. So we'll make sure the O's are facing up on all of them. Okay. I'm wondering if I should use this one actually because it looks like maybe some of the bloom came off. Let me change my mind on that one. We'll go ahead and use this one after all. It's just a little dirtier than I wanted. Okay. Well, we'll put our lid back on. And now this will auto rotate every 45 minutes. So I'm super excited. This is just like one more step to be having a self-sufficient homestead. You know, I wish that um, I had the time and the resources to do like breeding pigs. Um, so we're not having to buy feeder pigs every year, but that's not something that we're set up or have the space and time to do right now. So this is just one step that I can take. Um, so I am, this is, like I said, the very first time that I've ever done this. So I wasn't quite sure exactly everything that I needed to know. So last night I was chatting with Mindy at Life Goes North. If you guys aren't following her channel, I'll leave a link to it below. And one thing that she um, said was it's going to be important that seven to 10 days from now, I candle the eggs and see if they um, are viable. Um, so I need to research exactly what that looks like and how to do that process. But thanks, Mindy, for the tip. And yeah, so in 21-ish days, we might have some new chickens. I hope that they're all hens and I don't end up with like 70% roosters because that's not the objective or the goal. But you uh, are just taking a gamble when you're raising your own. So we'll see how it goes, guys. And uh, it's going to be a super fun experiment, uh, if nothing else, to just watch them hatch out and um, raise new life on the farm. Talk to you guys later.